Coming up on Network Africa. The U.S. military carries out airstrike in Somalia, killing five members of the Al-Shabaab militant group. The Democratic Republic of Congo confirms its first case of coronavirus. Plus, a rescue plane flies to Wuhan, the epicenter of the coronavirus, to evacuate South Africans stranded there. Thank you for joining us on the midweek edition of Network Africa. I'm Layo Aldegoke. We begin in Somalia, where the U.S. military says it has carried out an airstrike, killing five members of the Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab. This comes a day after it said four jihadists were killed in a similar attack. The United States Africa Command, AFRICOM, says it does not believe any civilians were injured in these attacks, although it is aware of reports on social media of civilian casualties. Over the weekend, an Al-Shabaab commander who had coordinated attacks on military targets was said to have been killed in another airstrike. These attacks by the U.S. military have become increasingly common under President Donald Trump's administration. Well, a controversial referendum in Guinea has been delayed for a second time. President Alpha Conde initially delayed it last month, saying there would be a slight postponement because of concerns about the fairness of the process. Voters were also due to elect members of parliament this coming Sunday. But the Electoral Commission said there had to be another postponement as it was awaiting a report from the West African body, ECOWAS. It sent a delegation last week to investigate the electoral process, in particular the electoral role. In February, the International Organization of La Francophonie, a grouping of French-speaking nations, said there were problems identifying around 2.5 million names listed on the electoral roll. For months, there have been violent demonstrations against the referendum that could allow the 82-year-old president to seek a third term in office. Well, we'll continue our coverage on the coronavirus in South Africa. The country has confirmed six new cases, bringing the nation's total, cap total to 13. Now, the new cases are in the provinces of Gateng, KwaZulu-Natal and Western Cape, and it involves people who have recently returned from trips to Europe. In the meantime, a plane has left South Africa, heading to China's coronavirus epicenter of Wuhan, to repatriate more than 120 citizens stranded there since the outbreak began. It is scheduled to leave China on Friday and land in South Africa later that day. Authorities say a total of 122 South Africans are to be repatriated. Now, that's fewer than the 180 people who originally said they wanted to be brought back home. Seeing off the team at the O.R. Tambo airport last night, President Cyril Ramaphosa commended the members of the SA National Defense Force, reminding them that this is an important mission for the whole country. Channel TV spoke to some South Africans on the streets to get their views on the returnees who are expected back in the country on Friday the 13th until they feel better to travel because I don't think if, if there's a scare of the uh, the, the virus uh, uh, well those people having the virus they should not be traveling at all I mean really that is just a risk on its own you know so it's a very uh, uh, inconsiderate decision that the governments are making I would say it, it's really not helping anybody out there well, I think the government needs to do the best they can in terms of uh, following medical protocols. You know, ideally, um, these people need to see their families, and um, uh, with the right professionals, we can manage it correctly and make sure we're treating people justly and fairly. No, they must, they must come back in three years. They mustn't die there, but they must be allowed to come back in three years. They must stay there with their families. They'll come back, and no, it's fine. And I, convoy, we're already packed in South Africa. I, no, they must... 
Yeah, stay there. What the government should actually do, it should give more education about it. Go to schools, go to companies, go to door to door in the communicate in the community, um, the township as well as the suburbs, to give people more education about it. Our well, South Africa Bureau Chief Betty Devia joins us now for more on this story. Hello, Betty. So a total of 122 people are expected to return. That's less than the 180, the initial figure that wanted to return. Why? What's the reason for this reduction? Well, we know that lately uh, we heard that uh, the lockdown in Wuhan uh, has sort of uh, reduced a little bit. Probably that may be responsible. Remember, you have people who are professionals, you have students, you have teachers in that place. So that may have been responsible. We had uh, 80 to 120 to, to 151, and then now back to 122. But these are the ones confirmed that will be coming back on Friday. And uh, we're, we're waiting. There's a process through which they will pass the pre-screening before they leave, of course, in conjunction with the Chinese authorities. And then when they get here, quarantine, there's a three-step process. The quarantine, the evacuation, the quarantine for 21 days. After that, by the 14th of the 21 days, there will be testing for them before they're released. You know, a week after, at least, their results would have uh, come out before they're released into the community. But the worry that the authorities have here is the issue of stigma. Those who finally find out these people are coming from China, whether they're sick or not, may be distancing themselves from them, which is a problem. There will be counseling as well for members of communities and these people too. Yeah, you've actually answered my next question, but let me just ask you about the six new cases that were confirmed you know, in South Africa. How are people reacting to this increase in cases? Of course, this is uh, getting more and more people worried. First, we had the case in KZN in Hilton, uh, uh, in but now it's expanded. So these new cases is, is spreading uh, uh, spreading it a bit wider. You have four, four in Houghton. Uh, one of them, we understand from the health department, is critically uh, ill. And then you have one in the Western Cape, one in, in uh, KZN, an additional one in KZN. People are getting worried. And this also expands the work that uh, expands, of course, the contact list of all these people and expanding the work that the uh, contact tracers, you know, from the Department of Health will have to, to, to start looking out for. But there's nothing, as long as people are moving around, there's a, a likelihood of, you know, more people being drawn into this web. Um, but authorities, the, 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 the NICD, the National Institute, for communicable diseases has expanded the, the test places from just the NICD laboratories, which is free for those who want to test, to the public health laboratories as well as the, those private sector. I can't name names, but you know, expanded um, the points so that people can actually just go present themselves to test these things. All right, let me also ask about what the authorities are doing. Would we be seeing any travel ban whatsoever to these hotspot countries? Uh, for now, the government says there's really no need for now for, for you know, placing a travel ban or travel restriction. I know that today we got a message from the Indian embassy, some uh, travel restrictions or travel ban for people from certain countries. But that's in, but in South Africa, for now, they're beating up uh, uh, screening processes at the at the points of entry, not just the airports. In, and, um, but for now, going to straight to your question, there's really no, there's no travel restriction, but they're monitoring more, much more and they're observing people much more. All right, Betsy, just before I let you go, what more can you tell us about the treatment of those, you know, that have been identified with this coronavirus? Well, some of them are in self-isolation, some of them are quarantined. But uh, yesterday, that's uh, on Tuesday, we, we were told that there's some designated facilities, some of them are academic hospitals, where these people are being treated. And um, they're being closely monitored. On Tuesday, we heard that one of them had been discharged. I can com confirm that, but for the new cases that we heard now, we, we, we understand that one is critical, according to the Department of Health. But they are in some of the designated uh, health facilities, and some are in self-isolation. As 
the first that the uh, patient zero uh, has his family with him uh, in self-isolation and he says he is much better so we don't know if he's going to let go at some point but there's panic closure of some schools which the department of basic education is worried about but uh, generally schools are nothing has been shut down but but people have been monitored and the health education people keeping clean and avoiding touching their face and and touching people you know that that's what the education is and, and the information sharing uh, at high level here all right then betty Debia, our south africa bureau chief thank you for speaking to us and do stay safe thank you very much well, the Ghanaian public officials and Gabonese MPs have been temporarily banned from traveling out of their countries in measures to prevent the coronavirus. Ghana's President Nana Akufo Addo temporarily suspended foreign travel through a letter issued by his chief of staff. The letter states that only essential and critical trips by public officials will be considered and approved. Over in Gabon, the Speaker of the National Assembly also has suspended all foreign trips by members of Parliament until further notice. There are no confirmed cases of coronavirus in Ghana or Gabon. The health authorities in the Democratic Republic of Congo have confirmed the first case of coronavirus in the country's capital, Kinshasa. Health Minister Eteni Longondo says the patient is a Congolese citizen who lives in France and returned to Congo on March the 8th with no symptoms of the virus. The Central African nation is the seventh sub-Saharan country to confirm a case of coronavirus. Meanwhile, the Al Congo, who has been in battling the Ebola virus is hoping to declare its recent outbreak over by next month if no new cases are discovered in the next three weeks. Well, a Thai national who fled from quarantine before doctors could test him for coronavirus has since returned for testing and has been declared negative. According to Zimbabwe's information ministry, the 26-year-old man had been referred to Wilkins Hospital in the capital, Harare, earlier this week with a fever. He arrived in Zimbabwe on the 14th of February from Thailand and had been described as low risk. The ministry said the man had since been discharged from hospital. Zimbabwe also does not have any confirmed case of coronavirus. Well, over in Uganda, the finance ministry is asking the Ugandan embassy in China to refund the money sent erroneously to their account after it emerged they sent almost 10 times more than planned. The Ugandan cabinet had approved $61,800 to be sent to China for students in Wuhan, which is the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. But the education ministry requested $600,000 a much higher amount which was approved. However, the Ministry of Finance stated in a recent letter that the amount approved by the cabinet was the lower amount of $61,800 and said it had asked the embassy to refund $538,200,000. Well, as the COVID-19 continues to spread around the world, some international experts and observers are speculating that Africa's relatively low number of coronavirus cases might simply be the result of poor reporting and low testing rates. However, many African health officials reject this suggestion that they are not adequately addressing the crisis, saying there has been an unprecedented level of mobilization for COVID-19, as well as a growth in reserve of experience to draw on. Dr. Amadou Sal, director of the Pasteur Institute in Dakar, Senegal, says he is happy and proud about what Africa has done and how prepared the continent is. Dr. Sal says African health officials have also learned a lot from the West African Ebola crisis in 2014 and have created critical communications and collaborative networks aimed at containing the virus. 
Well, medical expert and secretary of the National Medical Association, Dr. Ramon Murokola, he joins us now to speak more on this. Thank you so much, doctor, for speaking to us. Do you share this sentiment of international observers saying that the relatively low number of corona cases in Africa is as a result of poor reporting or low test rates? We believe a sentiment be raised by most international uh, um, communities that uh, the reason for low uh, cases of coronavirus in Africa Director. is largely due to uh, underreporting. Well, I it will be, they, they believe or their sentiment is not surprising. Uh, it will not be in the interest of African countries to underreport coronavirus. The reason being that if you underreport coronavirus, it costs it, it may likely lead to complacence amongst uh, your citizens. So the taking required precaution will not be take, take, will not be um, viewed as as viewed seriously by the citizens, which may end up leading to massive transmission amongst everybody. So, but for example, now after the the level of alerts amongst average Nigerians. Before the detection of the first case in Nigeria, that's an Italian, cannot be compared to the level of awareness and alertness after the case was detected. Imagine if, gov if the uh, government had decided to under or uh, to hide the case from uh, the citizens. Or you understand, the alertness wouldn't have been wouldn't have been heightened. So, con consider the economic implication. The health implication of the coronavirus. It is. I don't think it's in the interest of any country to underreport the the virus. So I don't share that sentiment. I believe whatever we are getting in Africa is a true reflection of 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 uh, the states. All right, Secretary of the National Medical Association, Dr. Ramon Moronkola, thank you so much for speaking to us. I'm afraid that's the much we can take. Well, but still to come on the program. Circus organizers in Cote d'Ivoire believe the entertainment form has a bright future in Africa after their successful week-long festival. Please stay with us.